The women Air Force service pilots, often nicknamed the WASP, were the first women to fly military planes for the United States Army during World War II. The women Air Force service pilots during World War II were not formally recognized as part of the Army, and after the war ended, they had gone home and gone back to their families and gone on with their lives. And as time went on, people kind of forgot about the service that they had provided during World War II. So in the 1970s, WASP had to get together and go back to Congress and ask for retroactive military status that was passed by legislation in 1977. While that was going on, my grandmother realized that because they had not been speaking about what they had been doing for 30 years, people had forgotten. And then when the women in the 1970s were going through pilot training, they were having to deal with a lot of the same issues that the women Air Force service pilots were dealing with in the 1940s. So it's important to remember what the women Air Force service pilots have done already, and it's not just for pilots and people in the military, it's just for women in general. My grandmother was Elaine Danforth Harmon, and she was a WASP during 1944, and she flew the basic planes that all the WASP flew during their training, AT-6s, BT-13s, Stearmans. So my grandmother's primary job during the WASP was to train male pilots on instrument training in the BT-13. She passed away a few years ago, and she wanted to be laid to rest at Arlington National Cemetery. But when our family applied to have her there, as she requested, the Army denied our request because they said that the law that was passed in 1977 that ultimately granted them veterans benefits did not apply at Arlington. Our family had to launch a campaign to have a new law passed, amending the 1977 law to make sure that the WASP service was recognized as equal to the men that they served with for the purposes of being laid to rest at Arlington National Cemetery. That law went through Congress and was signed by the President on May 20th, 2016. So now I appreciate her long journey of, of sharing her story with all these people and why she was doing it. And so now I am carrying that tradition on by having written a book about that whole process of lobbying Congress and some of her personal history and the history of the WASP and their legislative history and how our family ended up in that situation to share with people so they understand that why it's important to keep these historical notes going and sharing. Women in Aviation International organized a event that will become hopefully an annual event that started Memorial Day weekend of 2018, where they asked their members to go out to local cemeteries and seek out the graves of women Air Force service pilots and visit them and get to know the story behind each of these graves. And a lot of them left behind flowers and mementos. And then they shared it on social media to try to bring more awareness to the history of the women Air Force service pilots. Women in Aviation has been working very hard on keeping track of where the WASP are buried across the country and creating an interactive map so you can click on an area and find the WASP that are buried nearby you and what cemetery they are located at. I ask Women in Aviation members and their family members and friends and anyone else they can get to come to find a local cemetery that has some of the Women Air Force Service pilots this Memorial Day weekend and hashtag honor the wasp and share it on social media and tell the story of the women that you find at your local cemetery just to keep that history alive and help spread the awareness of the Women Air Force Service pilots.